Welcome, Blockhead Traders. Here at Blockhead Traders, I must inform you that we are not financial professionals. Nothing we say should be considered financial advice. We offer our own thoughts and opinions to you as a reference point. We expect that you will use these opinions to form your own financial conclusions and make your own financial decisions. Today is Sunday, April 25th, and this is Blockhead Traders Weekly. This week, I'm joined by fellow Blockhead Trader ViperXL007 and myself, Sprocket888. In this week's episode, we're going to recap a couple of the predictions we had from last week when we talked about earnings plays. And after we go through the review of how those picks actually panned out last week, uh, we're going to look ahead to this week because this week is an action-packed earnings week. There are tons and tons of earnings, and I'm going to lay out how we navigate this upcoming week for earnings about how we pluck out the ones we're considering playing and uh, which ones we're sitting on the sidelines for and why we're sitting on the sidelines. But before we get to all that, I want to give a quick plug for our Discord channel. You can find a link in the description below. It is a free and open Discord to anybody that wants to join. Just use the link below. Uh, in there, there's a couple of traders. You can ask questions directly to myself, to uh, ViperXL007. There's a couple of other traders you can ask questions to. Uh, I put different plays that I'm considering, different plays that I enter often get posted in there. Uh, so check it out and give us a hello. So last week, we brought up uh, two particular earnings plays. We brought up a Netflix and a uh, Snap play. And so what I'd like to do is basically just take a look back at the play for Netflix first. Um, and what I want to kind of recap or remind you of is basically we had called to play an Iron Condor on Netflix uh, thinking that, you know, it's really in the middle of its trading range that it's been at over the past uh, few months. And, you know, the earnings, well, they might go up, might go down. You know, since we were kind of in the middle, we thought we'd play both sides with an iron condor. Uh, and what I've got here on the charts that you can see is uh, two red lines. And those two red lines are basically where we had our short strikes um, in our last week's episode. You can go back to recap it and check it out. But basically, uh, we were selling the 500 put and we were also selling the uh, 600 call. And then we put uh, protection legs about $10 out from that. And so the well, trade we recommended uh, would have netted about $3.40 credit. And as you can see, uh, Netflix reported its earnings. It was a monster drop. Uh, however, it basically was caught by a lot of the levels that we had kind of called out in last week's episode. And so that particular iron condor would have played out to be a 100% winner. The other play uh, that we had talked about last week, uh, I did play and that was Snap. And so on the screen right now, you can actually see my the orders that I actually placed on Snap um, here on 422. So just about after lunchtime, I was taking a look and I was like, wow, so I'm going to play this one. And so what I did was I played uh, naked put. So I had a 53 put was what I sold. Uh, I sold two of them, collected $2.41. And, you know, I went out to the other strike for the call and I sold the 70 call. Now, if you remember, you know, earnings can be pretty dangerous uh, on the upside, especially with naked calls. So I bought a protection leg at the 80 call to really protect me if I kind of jumped too far through there. And so what happened is basically I collected $3.37. I played two of them, so multiply that by two, and that's the credit that I received. Uh, they reported their earnings, and uh, essentially uh, they didn't move. And as soon as I saw that there was really no after hours movement or anything, I, I didn't feel I needed the protection leg. And so about 9.38, shortly after the market opened, I went ahead and I sold that protection leg back and I actually collected 40 cents for each contract. So, you know, that bumped up my net credit by another 40 cents, which is kind of funny because the original cost of that protection uh, was 61 cents for the two of them. So essentially 30 and a half cents. So I actually made money uh, by playing that insurance, which is extremely atypical. Don't get used to that. Uh, but I was pretty fortunate to pick that up. Um, I let this thing hang out for a while to let the volatility still bleed off a little bit in the day uh, and keep lowering and lowering and lowering the price that I could buy the options back. 
And about 10, a little bit after 10 o'clock, I decided that, you know, it was over 50% profit for me, which is my normal targets. And to be able to pick that up uh, overnight um, is just super awesome. So I ended up buying back the options that I had left at $1.85. So my total profit was $2.32 per contract. Um, so I, I did two contracts. So $464 is what I ended up netting uh, overnight, which was super awesome. And uh just a, a great feeling. I, I think Mike actually played um, Snap as well. Mike, did you uh, you played Snap? It's true. Um, I did. I took the tip uh, that we. So yeah, we we laid out those two plays like you mentioned in last week's episode. Uh, at that time, I didn't have intentions to play either one, um, but kind of like we mentioned in last week's episode. Um, if the prices stayed where we saw them that Sunday, uh, then everything we said was applicable. Um, but you, but you know, and just like this week, anything we say, it's, it's based on the prices now, but if the prices change, the environment has changed and you got to reevaluate day of. So we reevaluated, um, Jeremy texted me and I went and looked and I was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> that looks really nice. So let's go ahead and do it. So yeah, I opened up, um, I did a, um, I just looked at it. Let me double check. Um, I sold a 68, no, I'm sorry. I sold a 50 naked, uh, put, and then I sold a 68 call. And then my protection leg was up at 75. Um, so I was 50, 68, 75. Um, so <clears throat> let's take a look at the way I closed it because I closed it a little differently than Jeremy did. So Jeremy, um, grabbed the whole thing, closed it out. Well, minus the getting some, some money back on the protection leg. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the chart here, uh, of what happened that day. Um, <clears throat> so here is, uh, and I tried to load after hours and it's not that important, but it was interesting to see the immediate reaction to earnings. Um, cause even though this shows an uptick, uh, the immediate after hours action, when an, when an earnings were announced is it actually dropped um and it dropped uh kind of i don't remember the exact number you could look at extended hours data but it was down here right around 55 54 uh it came down maybe it wasn't quite that low but it came down and then it came back up after hours and opened high um but nonetheless so uh i was down at 50 on my put i was up at 68 on my call. And I, and so these are the levels that I had last week as well. So these were the same levels that I was basing all of that off of, um, I put the, the, put the call just above this, uh, 67 here, um, which is a monthly level. Uh, so fairly strong level. So I just wanted to be just out of reach of that. Um, and 50 was just below this weekly level here. Uh, kind of encroaching on this other, this second weekly level. Um, and we discussed all that last week. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Um, so what was interesting here is obviously, so we opened, I was watching this thing pre-market, um, you know, it's all it start to take off. Um, but wasn't worried because plenty of, plenty of room to run. So it opened up up here. Um, and then it took it a second. Uh, you can see this long wick, um, took it a second to turn and then when it turned, it just started running away down, um, which was fine. You know, I mean, like Jeremy said, this was picture perfect, steady eddy right in the middle, um, which is great. But there was still a little movement on it and volatility hadn't quite settled down. So I just wanted to feel more efficient with my play. So what happened is um, as this starts to drop here, I, similar to Jeremy, realized, hey, protection is done. You know, you, you're, you're buying the protection for uncertainty when the market is closed and you can't act on your play. Um, so the market's open now, you know, in a split second, I can bail out of this thing, whatever. Uh, so protection has done its job. It protected me for any ridiculous, crazy, you know, after hours when I can't make any moves. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so I close that out. Let's, let's get that out because as this drops, as this runs away from what I bought, I'm only going to sell it, be able to sell it for less and less. So let's get that thing done. 
uh, close it out. So protection's gone. Um, now I just have the strangle with the put and the call. Um, and then again, so I think it was around this second drop here after this little springboard up. So uh, around this second drop, that's when I realized, hey, you know, why why close the whole thing? Like, let's, let's really squeeze some juice out of this. Um, the 50, the 50 put uh, was was well, well good. Uh, it was a 71, 72% uh, profit. Um, so done, did its job and trend line is down. So I'm only losing profits as the price comes towards that 50. It's nowhere near, you know, being at risk or anything like that, but let's maximize our uh, potential here. So close that, close the put side, left the call side open just to see where this, where this action went. So because when you're strangled, you know, you're kind of fighting yourself in some respects as far as, you know, when it goes this direction, you get better value up here, more profits up here than you do down here and vice versa. Um, so I wanted to, you know, let's let's play this out and really squeeze the orange. So closed the 50, um, took the 72%. At the same time, it was around when Jeremy closed his, we, I was sitting right around 50% total combined the two. Um, but I wanted more out of my, my call. So trend line was down. Um, you know, this rejection here, uh, you know, cause there's, there's intraday levels as well. Like there's levels at every time frame you're looking at. So I was watching the intraday levels and I was watching lower lows. It was not breaking those yet. Uh, so I, I, I kept the call open, kept squeezing some profits out of it. Um, and it turned out, so then right in this area here, I'm looking at the five minute chart, but I think if I, if I went to the one minute chart somewhere in here, it broke to a higher low. Um, so that was, I mean, I could have waited, but that was enough of a trend that, okay, it stopped that movement. Now it's making a turn. So then I closed out the call and ended up squeezing another 10 or 15% out of my profits because I was no longer fighting myself because I closed the, I closed the put left the call hanging. Uh, it continued to, to drop, gave more value to the call. And in total, I ended up closing out at, uh, 62% total for the whole play. Um, so that's, I mean, I mean, money's money, I guess, but it, you know, it was also opportunistic of like, Hey, I I'm available, I'm available to watch this right now. So let me just take a look at it and see what happens. And then obviously, as we can see, as the day went on, um, yeah, I could have got, I mean, hindsight's always 2020, but I'm, I'm happy with where I closed that out. Sure. It came up and then it continued down. Um, but that was definitely a sign that it was, it was gassed on the run on the bear run. Uh, because it, even though it came down, it came back up right in this range where I sold it. And then we took off back up, uh, and closed Friday up around 6138. So, um, I was pretty happy with that. And then it, it, it added another layer to making earnings fun. Um, just because it was that in, I was no longer in the realm of concern or any, like now it was just playing a game and let's just squeeze and dink and dunk and get, get the most out of it. So, um, so yeah, it was fun and it's always fun when it's winter. Um, so we'll see what happens this week. Cause, uh, what do we got? We got some stuff coming up this week too. Oh, yeah. This week is uh, major earnings week. All kinds of stuff coming up. Um, so I'm going to pull up in just a second here uh, my screener for this week to show you how full it is of, of options to play. Uh, I do want to just call out one quick thing on the earnings plays. Um, just a reminder, you really don't have to monitor the market uh, like you know Mike and I happen to on Snap. Um, quite frequently, I'm too busy with my day job and, and other things to monitor that. And so what I'll do is I'll put a closing order out there for what I'd like to close at. Um, and it'll just kind of execute the whole thing, um, you know, on its own. So this is not something that you have to babysit and look at or, or do kind of any sort of acrobatics um, that, that we kind of called out. Just a, a reminder, you can just put your, your close order in at the target price and, and move on. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at uh, how I screen for earnings. And so what I've got here is my earnings screener. And this basically is just looking in the next five days, 
Uh, and you can see there's 97 plays uh, coming up this week. And, um, you know, the first thing I do when I look at this is I sort by what's called IV percentile. And the reason I do this is I want to play uh, the things with the highest IV percentile. And that what that basically means is, you know, in the past 52 weeks, um, how high or low is the volatility relative to those past 52 weeks? And the reason I always want a really high IV percentile is because the reversion to the mean is likely, the chances of that are greater if you're already at the higher end of that volatility range. You know, it's not a sure thing, but the odds are in your favor. And so the ones that I really try to consider are any big names that have a high IV percentile. And most of the time I'm looking for something over 40, um, you know, ideally over 50 or, or even greater is, is super wonderful. Now, because there's a lot from the coronavirus and everything from last March, a lot of these IV percentiles are a little bit muted. So, you know, what shows is maybe a 30 any other year might be a, you know, 40 or 45. So I, I get a little bit deeper now, a little bit lower until the rest of this coronavirus volatility kind of falls off um, as we move on. But, you know, one of the very first ones that jumps out at me is Grubhub. Okay. And, you know, that's a 62% IV percentile. Um, you know, I like to play stocks that are less than a hundred on options because I can, you know, I feel comfortable playing some of them naked. Uh, but what I want to kind of show you is when we take a look at Grubhub, um, if we look at the option chain on Grubhub, one of the first things I do as I go through here is, okay, this has a good IV percentile, but what does the option chain look like? And so when I look at the option chain of Grubhub, I see a red flag. And that red flag is this bid ask spread. And what a bid ask spread is, is the difference between the bid prices to the ask prices. Now, uh, this is a sign of liquidity. So the closer these two are to each other, the more liquid the options uh, contracts are. When they're really wide, it means it's very illiquid and you do not want to trade anything that is illiquid in the options world. Um, it's just gonna put you in a bad place. Um, you're gonna get bad fills. You're gonna have a hard time exiting. And when you do exit, you're gonna exit for more costs than you want to. Um, and so basically anything that's over, you know, 10, 20 cents wide, I shy away from. And you can see here, we're talking multiple dollars wide here. Uh, so this is a red flag for me, and, and I would not consider playing this despite the fact that the IV rank is in there, the premium looks good, uh, but liquidity is king, and you do not want to get into an illiquid trade because you can that'll take you bad places. Um, you know, I might check this to see if it changes much, you know, when the market opens, uh, but if I look at, you know, maybe, because these prices are all from Friday's close, but if I look at, you know, other expiration uh in, in this chain, the, the spread is just too wide. Uh, so, so grub is, is just not a play that I'm going to play here. So I'll kind of continue down on my list and say, okay, well, grub's no good. So, uh, what's the next thing that I might play? And Nova jumps out to me, you know, this one is, you know, almost 60 percentile Ivy rank. The volume on Friday of the underlying was about 2 million shares. Uh, it's about $39. So, you know, let's take a look at Nova. So, when I look at Nova, we're going to do the first, the same thing. I'm going to pull up the option chain. Uh, in the option chain, you can see here, we're talking about a 20 cent wide bid ask spread. Uh, here is 10 cents. Uh, over here, we got 40 cents. Uh, so this, this is a, a decent liquidity. This is not super liquid, but um, this is not something I would run away from. So, you know, then the next thing I kind of look at is, okay, well, where's, where's everything sitting chart wise? Uh, and I don't really do detailed chart analysis whatsoever on this. I just do a quick look at the chart to see, you know, where is it with the different moving averages? Is it kind of the middle? Is it kind of in the bottom? Um, the thing that looks to me here is it kind of looks like it's been on a bearish trend uh, a little bit. And it, it almost looks like it's kind of breaking out of this bearish trend here in the past couple of days. So it's broken through its 21-day uh, moving average and broken through the 50-day moving average. And, you know, this could be the potential sign of an upswing here. So 
if anything, it's definitely not in the middle of its channel. So I, when I look at this, you know, I say it's not worth the extra, you know, 25 bucks to try to get this extra th premium, um, given the way that, that that call option, the spread on it is. So when I look at Nova, um, what I'm kind of considering here is basically just trading this a pure bullish naked put. Um, so at the the 35 strike, and you know I, I rolled down here to two times my credit received uh, for my bailout price. Uh, so 120 is what I'm collecting on one. So this comes down to about 240 at the 3140 mark. So this is how I set up my risk here. Um, so my 3140. So for my trade size, I really want my trade size to be around, um, you know, three 3k is about the risk that I'm willing to take in my portfolio. Uh, so this is my bail price. So I set this bail price. I look at this margin required, uh, 3370. I'm collecting 360 on this play. So that puts my um, margin at 3000 worst case, which is about where I like my risk uh, for my portfolio size. And um, so then I'll just kind of take a look back at the chart to then say my break even here is around uh, 3379. And just to see as a gut check where that sits on the chart. Um, that's a little bit below the 200 day moving average. Um, you know, the, the lows here, there. So I'm pretty comfortable with this. I'm going to put this on my marker as something to consider, uh, for earnings. Um, Nova reports Wednesday after the bell. So we'll see what this thing looks like on Wednesday, what the premium is, uh, where the strikes are. And, you know, I'll, I'll decide at that time, uh, what it looks like on, on if I'm going to play it or not. Mike, I don't know if you got a chance to uh, take a look here at Nova or if you have any comments on Nova. Uh, yeah. So let's uh, take a quick look at uh, my uh, charting of this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I think I like where I saw those targets at. Um, right now it's sitting at $39.91, um, the underlying. Uh, basically what we're looking at is... Um, uh, color coding wise, uh, this, this pinkish red up at the top, those are my, those are my yearly blue is weekly purple is monthly levels. Um, and so we can see that it's kind of between these two, uh, weekly levels and it's kind of then between these two monthly levels as you kind of pan out a little bit. Um, and of important note to everything you just said, this uh, monthly level here is 3076. That's, you know, that just happens to be where I, where I dropped it. So schmoo that a little bit and, you know, maybe plus or minus a dollar or two. Um, but I mean, clearly that's, that's the range of this particular level. And I like the strength of this level. Um, you know, we can see there was a run up to all time high, uh, 5830. Um, and then we came back and then we just kind of bounced multiple times here on this, this monthly level. So catalysts are catalysts, anything can happen, but I like the strength of that, uh, that we'll call it a 30 level. Um, so, um, going bullish, especially in light of those calls and in where the call side sits, um, and you know, that makes sense. And, and I kind of like being, uh, bullish down here on a, on a naked put, you know, in this, in this 30 range. Um, and that's a decent, uh, a decent margin risk as well. So, uh, so yeah, I think that, uh, that checks out over here, looking at the chart a little more detailed for sure. So eBay then jumped out at me as uh, you know, potential play here. They got a good price here. The underlying, the volume is really high. So what does the option chain look like? The option chain is definitely in the realm of acceptable bid ask spreads. Um, so then what do we do? We got to take a look at the charts. What do the charts look like? Just a rough gut feel of the charts. And you can see eBay, um, you know, since December here has been kind of on a bullish trend, uh, a little bit up and then kind of pulls back. It broke through both the moving averages then kind of broke through them again, up, up, up. And it looks like it's currently pulling back to the moving averages again. 
Um, so when I look at this, I see the potential for um, a bounce here off the moving average, a uh, potential catalyst on the earnings. Um, you know, we're kind of near uh, relative recent highs or 52 week highs when it comes to eBay. Um, so I want to be real cautious on the bull side here or on the call side. So if I hop back to the option chain to see what I might play, you know, I kind of decided, well, I think I really want to try to collect the, the two sides here of the uh, option, but I definitely want to give myself some room on the upside uh, because it is kind of more on the bottom end of its trend. And so, you know, I took the uh, 59 put, so short the 59 put, that one is naked. Um, and then looking ahead on the 59 put, I also believe is a 33 delta. Um, so that's a pretty aggressive um, put side for earnings. Um, I'll probably wait and see what this looks like. I might consider what the, the P and L charts look like by bumping that thing down, um, a little bit more. Uh, and then on the call side, I'm basically looking at the 67 call. Uh, but if you remember the chart, 6511 was the high. So I kind of want to layer in some protection up here just in case this thing goes to the moon for whatever reason. Um, and so I would basically buy a 71 protection insurance. So this more resembles the snap trade, uh, but you can see that it is, uh, it's kind of a neutral trade, but you can see I've shifted the strikes to be much more bullish. So it would be a bullish to neutral trade. So it's not gonna take as much downside movement um, before and the strikes are on the end of the week so if this thing kind of challenged on the put side or we we had bad earnings and we're sliding um i can basically close out my call spread for a profit and i can roll this put spread i'm very comfortable rolling ebay uh for a while i'm also comfortable owning ebay actually which is a very very important criteria in my opinion, is whenever you play a naked put, you need to make sure that you are okay owning the shares of the uh, short uh, the trade that you are going naked on. So, Mike, did you uh, take a look at eBay chart much? Uh, yeah. So, um, jumping straight into that one, um, I I agree. So I'm a, I'm of the mindset that I'm I'm feeling pretty good about a naked put on this one. Um, we're sitting here at 6091 like you said uh, the i you know was just off but 65 and change was all time high so we're really close to that and i don't when when the price is pushing all time high i really don't i don't feel comfortable playing around with uh calls and and protection up there um i mean well certainly no naked calls when we're pushing all time high because again going back to the fundamentals of price action and pricing levels uh, when you break all time high, there is no, uh, there is no known way where place that's going to stop. Um, and that's really scary if you're naked, especially, but so without, you know, would absolutely enter that with protection. Um, but then that gets into the hindrance of the underlying, uh, profit calculus that, you know, you're doing in your mind and everything Jeremy just said about being comfortable holding the shares, uh, on on naked being able to withstand uh, purchase of those shares if if need be, um, so all all the kind of things that go through the mind, um, and in that case, uh, you know I'm pretty comfortable with a naked put, um, possibly uh, depending on prices when we get to earnings, depending on where the prices are at, um, somewhere between this either 53 or 58 level, depending on what happens again, Monday or Tuesday, do we breach 58? Do we go down lower and then approach 53? Um, but that's kind of where my head's going to be at. Um, also, uh, eBay tech sector pandemic, all that kind of stuff. Um, if we're looking at, uh, down here, previous earnings, how's it reacted in the past to previous earnings? And, the most recent uh, was a big, that was the, again, this is the weekly chart. Um, that was a big, big bump up on earnings. That, uh, But previously, 
what I'm seeing here, uh, just looking at my horizontal line here, when we look at earnings, uh, the one before that, the one before that, we have a we have fair amount of stability around earnings throughout the pandemic environment uh, and any market conditions that have have cropped up in there. So again, that also is going to play into my calculus as I as we approach the date. Um, that there, you know, it's not like this is a an, a company that gets strong negative reactions. Uh, to earnings. So that certainly uh, speaks to a historical trend uh, that I will also be considering. But definitely I'm just going uh, naked put on this one, not not messing around on the call side. All right below eBay is Amazon. Uh, Amazon, so you can see we're, we're starting to get down into the 30s. And this is really where the uh, volatility, the IV rank starts to drop off for me, um, where everything down here is is probably just not thick enough. Uh, you're not really going to get much of the IV crush you're looking for, uh, despite whatever the companies are. So uh, Amazon, I kind of want to look at just because Amazon is such a large priced uh, underlying. Um, you usually can kind of net some big, big, big uh, options prices out of this. Amazon, I typically like to try to trade maybe $10 is about as narrow as I get. Um, now, a lot of times I'll, I'll make my iron condors wider when it comes to underlyings to get a little bit more exposure to the Greeks. But, you know, earnings are a very binary play. And the tighter you have your uh, strikes on the legs of your condor, the more binary your play is. You know, the chances of landing in the middle are, are less. So because earnings is a binary type play, I tend to compress my uh, wings of my condor uh, tight, uh, just based on, you know, I'm just playing the binary event. So I'm going to put a 16 Delta put out there and, uh, that's the 3170. I'm going to give it a $10 wide. Um, so I'm going to buy protection at 3160. Uh, this is way, way, way too large for my account to play naked. So, uh, this definitely is getting the wings. Uh, if I look at the other side, I called out 3595. Um, Look at 3595. Uh, that is a 10 delta. And I basically arrived at that by looking at the chart of of Amazon, kind of seeing where where things were uh chart-wise, uh, where it's been kind of pushing up. Um, you know, I, I got a little nervous. You know, it's been very, very horizontal lately. So uh, it's on the more upper end of it's recent trading, but this has been basically horizontal since, what is this, August, basically the summertime of last year. So this has gone a whole lot of nowhere. Uh, I don't see much changing with the earnings, uh, but I wanted to give myself a little bit more on the upside protection. So I pushed up to a 10 delta on the call side and went out the $10 there on the protection leg. Um, you also notice I did bump out to the 21st of May. Um, so what you see here is um, a very binary trade. Oops, I need to switch back, sorry. Um, what you see here is a kind of very binary iron condor. Uh, I like this because um, it's a lot greater uh, return than normally I get on my condors. So, you know, I'm collecting 422. My max loss would be 578. So it's a closer to like a 40% return, 42% return here um, for what I think is a pretty good channel in Amazon. <coughs> um, looking at the 3170, sorry, yeah, 3170 on the put side. Um, so yeah, I, I probably take up my trade to the three grand. That's where I like to target my trade size. So I'm going to do, th I would do three of these contracts. Um, we'll see how this kind of shapes up as Amazon, I believe is Thursday after the bell. Mike, did you uh, get a chance to look at some of the Amazon charts? Um, I did. And I think this is one I'll, uh, I'll play on paper. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, not because of, I mean, if I was going to play it and maybe what I'll, what I'll play on paper or at least watch is certainly what you just laid out because it, 
uh, it is the most comfortable. Um, if we look over here, you know, I mean, just like you saw, I see the same thing, you know, going all the way back to July of 2020, this thing's just da, 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 just stuck in this channel, um, which is very odd for Amazon. I mean, all, all gas runs out eventually. Um, but I mean, this thing, I mean, we all know Amazon and this thing has just been, it's never been stuck quite like this, I guess a little close just before, uh, and then it exploded. So who knows, maybe it's going to explode again. Um, but, uh, going back in here, um, to be a little closer, I also had to break my normal trend. So, uh, long time viewers may notice yellow. Where did that come from? Uh, that's actually my daily color. I had to go all the way to the dailies because when I was charting, uh, monthlies and weeklies, um, I kept seeing, so this is a slight tangent to, to my charting here. I kept seeing, oh, I'll just leave that there, but I kept seeing this appearance of a level, but my annual monthly and weekly strategy did not surface what that level was. Um, and obviously I can visually look at it and be like, yeah, that's the level. Um, but that's not good enough. Um, so I actually, this was a perfect example when I went one more granular level down because I wanted to know what defined that level. Where did it start? Um, and all that kind of stuff. So I went to the dailies and sure enough here, uh, 29, 84 is in the ballpark of, of where I, where I did it again, let's schmoo at one or 2%. And all of a sudden, um, that, well, I guess I'm still a little below that 31, uh, put you were talking about, um, but, uh, that at least seems to hold up on this, on this horizontal that it's in. Um, but the main, so the main reason I'm playing it on paper is, uh, every, I like the binary aspect. I mean, I need the binary aspect, you know, just like, I think anyone watching this, <laughs> uh, any risk of, uh, assignment on this is devastating. You know, when you're up in this range, um, you know, it's just that, that I, there's no naked option period. Um, and even a wider spread on the protection leg is, is makes me uncomfortable. So, uh, keeping it tight, keeping it binary. Um, I like the play you laid out. Um, I just being new into these, uh, into these earnings plays and things like that. I'm going to keep sticking with things I can be comfortable getting assigned on <laughs> and having, uh, shares of, but I'm definitely going to watch this and see what happens. Uh, and, uh, take note for uh, a future run for sure. Yeah, we'll see. There's quite a bit of time before Thursday. So, you know, I could, I could change and reevaluate that day, but, uh, that's where you'll want to tune into the discord, because if I am going to make a play, I'm going to go ahead and post it in the discord. So you'll know, uh, what the play is that I'm going to make and, and when I actually make it. So kind of jumping back to the, the earnings chart here. Um, I do just kind of want to pull up, you know, you, you kind of look through this chart of all these other earnings and you're going to be like, but Jeremy, What's going on? You know, Apple reports this week. Why are you not playing Apple? Google reports this week. Ford reports this week. I mean, uh, really high volume, you know, AMD reports this week. And, you know, I'm going to point you to the IV percentile. And, you know, that crush is not there. The one other stock that I want to call out that just it the attention jumped out at me. Uh, if I, you know, volume of the underlying is something I look at. And I, just kind of glancing down here, I'm like, holy guacamole, 118 million shares of MVIS. What the heck is that? So this one I had a look at uh, because, you know, the IV rank isn't that high, but oh my goodness, is that some crazy volume? So uh, I just want to take a look at this with you guys here real quick. Um, pulling up the option chain here on MVIS. And, you know, the spread, it's good spread here. Um, I like this. I like this quite a bit. This is something I would definitely trade. Um, so let's take a look at the chart. And if you take a look at the MVIS chart, wowzers, look at these candles here. Um, the most recent candle jumping from, you know, 
13 up to $18. Um, no idea what this company does, um, but this is the type of trading that I probably would love to do if this thing pulls back down. Uh, so MVIS is probably going on my watch list here uh, because, you know, it's a, it's a lower share price. It has some crazy swings here. And the volatility at this, well, you know, the IV rank is not that historic. I mean, look at the, the volatility here, 202% in May. Um, and you look out there, you know, 173 too. like this, this is a premium rich underlying. Now it happens to be a little bit extended right now for me to enter a uh, short put, but these super explosive stocks like this, um, these are prime premium put selling for me. So you get this thing to pull back to a 21 day or 50 day moving average. And I am going to sell that put for sure uh, on something like this. So I wanted to call this out because that volume is just crazy high. Um, I don't know when these guys report earnings. They report on Thursday after the bell. So, you know, who knows uh, if this thing ends up pulling back. Um, looking at the chart, like at these big candles, you know, you get a quick slide back down here. Um, this is definitely something I'm going to keep my eye on. But right now, it's just too stretched out for me to uh, consider playing the earnings on quite yet. But on a pullback, I would consider that even outside of earnings. This is one that's going on my watch list. Mike, I don't know if you probably didn't get a chance to look at the, the chart on MVIS, but mm. that's definitely one that uh, I think we should be watching for some some naked puts to, yeah. uh, to go on that one if that thing ever comes back to these moving averages. Oh, for sure. Uh... Uh, yeah, I'm definitely curious to go chart that one and take a look, uh, especially at those. I mean, like you said, that that price, multiple contracts, and I'm still fine getting filled on that. That's what I love about uh, lower priced underlyings, though. Generally, like you said, normally they're not as premium rich, and so that's the unicorn of sorts that you can get premium rich and you can do multiple contracts and be fine. You know holding that stock if you needed to. Uh, so very curious to see how that one goes and look more into it for sure. Yeah. I don't even know what that company does, but uh, when, when they're trading 118 million shares, I mean, wowzers. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a lot of volume. All right. Well, those are all the uh, stocks that I kind of wanted to bring up to everybody's attention uh, this week that are going to be trading out there. Uh, keep an eye on the discord find out if we're actually gonna enter any of the trades we kind of talked about here. Uh, if not, you definitely know what you guys can look for anyway as earnings come up. You know, you're gonna look for that IV uh, percentile range to be on the high end because you really wanna play that volatility crush. Uh, just because it's a big name uh, doesn't always mean it's a liquid underlying, so pay attention to that bid-ask spread. Um, make sure that you know your risk tolerance is is there. And, and the most important thing, when you're considering entering these trades, you know, you're going to look at the premium. You're going to be like, Ooh, this is, this is great. I'm going to collect this money. Uh, but know your exit plan, uh, know your exit strategy, know what, what, what triggers are going to make you do what actions have all of that planned out ahead of time. Uh, because the most dangerous thing you can do in trading is trade with emotion and having all of those exit plans laid out when you enter the trade, uh, really can take that emotion out of it and you can trade very mechanical. And that's really where you're not going to get suckered into, oh, if I just hang on just a little bit longer or, oh, maybe this is going to pan out, you know, set your levels, set your exit plan and execute on it. Uh, that's my recommendation to you guys. So, you know, hop in the discord, give us a shout out. Otherwise, good luck this week. Have fun. And remember, think outside the block.